ITO4, happy Thursday. I have the second part of how Groundhog's garden grew. And so if you remember, Groundhog was taking somebody's food from the garden and the squirrel told him it would be a better idea to plant his own garden. So they were helping him get all the seeds ready to go and planting in the ground. So now we're gonna have to see if this actually will work and if they're gonna get some food out of this. So, Squirrel told Little Groundhog, plants need lots of sun. We'll plant taller vegetables in the back so they won't cast a shadow over the shorter ones. So behind the row of root crops, they planted seeds of tomatoes, peppers, and leafy greens. Some vegetables grew on vines, and said Squirrel, she pounded sticks into the ground for the pea and bean plants to climb. Some plants grow very fast, Grow very big, said Squirrel. They planted the seeds of pumpkin, zucchini, yellow squash, sunflowers, corn, and artichokes far apart to give them lots of room to grow. Ooh, if you guys, do you guys know what vegetable this is? The next day, Squirrel said, let's visit my garden. I want to show you the plants that come up year after year all by themselves. They're called perennials. So, sure enough, shoots of raspberries and asparagus were already poking up through the ground. Squirrel dug up a frilly young asparagus plant for little groundhog's garden. She told him, you'll need to wait three years before this asparagus has nice thick stems to eat. Three years. Little groundhog said, thank you, I'm off to plant my perennials. He said it very slowly. Every day, Little Groundhog watched and waited and watered his garden. Then one day, tiny seedlings emerged. What a wonder, he exclaimed. But as they grew, he worried, are these seedlings too crowded together? What should I do, he asked Squirrel. Pull some up and plant them somewhere else, she said. She is so smart. Little Groundhog pulled up a few seedlings and looked at them. The peas, the beans, and all the seeds split open from each a root grew down and a shoot grew up. Little Groundhog transplanted some seedlings where they had more room to grow. When Wren and Praying Mantis said to the Little Groundhog, if you promise not to harm us with bug spray, we birds and insects will help you with your garden. We will eat the harmful insects that hurt your plants. Little Groundhog promised. He's not going to use any chemicals to hurt the other animals. As the weeks passed, plants grew and blossomed. Bees, flies, and butterflies came to eat the sweet nectar and carried pollen from flower to flower. They told Little Groundhog, the wind, the rain, and we insects pollinate your flowers so they can become fruits and vegetables. Look at those guys. These guys help make other things grow. Little Groundhog noticed that after a flower was pollinated by an insect or by the wind, its petals dried up and fell off. Underneath was the smallest beginning of a tiny vegetable. A tiny tomato, a tiny cucumber, a pepper, an eggplant, a pea pot, a zucchini. So this is how a garden grows, Little Groundhog cried jubilantly. He's very happy. Every one of these sentences has an exclamation point. That's how excited he is. Tomatoes turned red, heads of cabbage grew. A sunflower seemed to explode from the top of a tall stalks. Snap peas, string beans, peppers, lettuce, and chard grew, lar chard grew larger under the warm sun. Ate, he ate his very own vegetables. Little groundhog rejoiced. He ate his very own vegetables, plain and fresh, from his very own garden all summer long. He has got lots of vegetables. When fall came again, Squirrel wanted to share one more secret with Little Groundhog, cooking. And so they stewed tomatoes, boiled corn, broiled potatoes, stir-fried veggies, and even stuffed a baked zucchini saving the seeds to plant the next year. 
There was so much more than they, they, than they could eat themselves. What do we do? said asked Little Groundhog. We share, said Squirrel. So many vegetables. What a great idea, cried Little Groundhog. As they sat around the table, their friends exclaimed, Thank you for inviting us to this amazing feast, Little Groundhog replied. Thank you for all forgiving me for eating from our garden from your garden last year. And thank you, Squirrel, for teaching me to grow my own. It's beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible, and let's eat. They're having a feast, kind of like a Thanksgiving feast. What a fortunate creature I am, he thought. Delicious, nutritious, homegrown food and wonderful friends to share it with. Little Groundhog grew into a big groundhog and became known far and wide for his annual Thanksgiving dinner. And that is how Groundhog's Garden grew. Alrighty. I hope you guys liked the second part of that book. It was awesome to see how it ended up and that, they, that he shared at the very end of the book. That was amazing. So you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Okay? Bye.